Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another episode of Porn Star Confessions. And I'm super excited. I'm going to be talking to Gunnar Stone. And I'm really excited to talk to him for a lot of reasons. He's very, very unique. So welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So one thing that really blows me away about you and your work is you were probably one of the only successful crossovers I've ever seen. Oh, well. Thank you. I, uh, you know, do my best. I just try to have a good time with everybody. For me, it's more about, more about the vibe, you know, whether it's like men, women, like, you know, I have some good encounters and some bad encounters. Um, but you know, try to at least, even if it's a bad encounter, I still try to make it look good at least. <laughs> but like, how did you do that though? Cause like, I know a lot of guys like, you know, once they shoot any type of like gay content, you know, women won't go anywhere near them. So how did you cross that threshold? Uh, I've definitely um, had like more like what, back when I used to shoot just straight stuff, it was like a revolving door. Girls like want to shoot, 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 shoot. And now like, you know, it's definitely not as easy like finding them. You know, there's definitely like a stigma between it. It's like funny how much like, you know, there's definitely a good amount of performers. I'm not going to obviously name names who are just like all about me, even like the biggest agency, you know, um, like has wanted me. Uh, and the only reason they wouldn't represented me since I literally got into this industry was because I was out on the East Coast. I was living in Florida. And then um, they found out I was moving to Vegas. Uh, saw them at like ABN, you know, they're all over me. They're like, oh, blah, blah, oh my God, you're moving to Vegas. Like, yes, I need to sign you. I need to sign you, blah, 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 and everything like that. But I guess they weren't paying close enough attention because they didn't know I was doing gay stuff now. And then I was just like, oh, yeah, well, like, I work with Howard over at Fab Scout. Um, he does my gay bookings, but he's okay with me taking, like, straight by stuff, like, straight by trans, like, whatever stuff with, like, another agency as well, um, if you still want to represent me. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, oh. We'll let you know. <laughs> and then in a few days, I followed up and I'm just like, hey, so like, what you thinking? And I'm just like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. So even you as a successful crossover, you still do deal with that. Oh, yeah. A lot of it. But because I saw a tweet you made like about uh, like a, a former Playboy model you wanted to shoot with. It was like totally fine. And then, oh, wait. Yeah. We... Oh, yeah. She was like, because I guess I don't have like as much on like my Instagram, even though like I have in my bio, like pan and everything on there. And I guess she only really like saw my Instagram, which I try to like keep pretty much just like very like generic, more like mainstream. Like I mostly just put like modeling pictures on there. I've been deleted on Instagram like three times. So I try to keep it as like least like porny as possible. So I guess she just like saw like my modeling pictures and like stuff like that. And, uh, I don't know. I have pan with the LGBT flag in my bio, but I guess she overlooked that. And she was just like, Oh yeah. Like here, like text my assistant and uh, you guys can set up the date and details and like everything like that. And then the assistant is like, Oh, can uh, you send me your social medias? And then I guess when she went to my Twitter, it was just like, Shh. wow. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> knowing like, what you know now like if you could go back in time would you still have done everything you did like the way you did it a hundred percent absolutely my life has dramatically changed for the better since i started working with guys like you know like i'll be honest when i first started obviously it was just for money kind of thing kind of ordeal um but you know as i've gone on and i've experimented i've learned you know it's fun too <laughs> You know, uh, drop, drop the top to the toxic masculinity, you know, bullshit. And, um, you know, straight porn, don't get me wrong, it was fun. Like, you know, I was fucking a bunch of hot girls and everything like that, but I was fucking broke. <laughs> you know, like, I was struggling to pay my bills. I really can, like, I love to do music festivals and, like, stuff like that and like, having to, like, sleep on air mattresses and hotels and split rooms with like like six seven people just to be able to afford to go and you know just like struggling you know and um time passed and he got older and i'm just like you know i can't just have fun forever <laughs> you know like time, time's ticking 
So I'm like, you know, I, I, uh, cause I do a little bit of the porn and like influencer thing. Um, you know, I was like a Instagram influencer long before I ever decided to step into porn. And, um, I had a few buddies who were doing like, you know, at least they're like gay for pay kind of deal. And I saw the kind of money that they were making. And I was just like, fuck it. You know, like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I took the dive and, you know, I wouldn't change a thing in my life. It was, like straight porn, you got to pay for your test, you got to pay for your flight, you got to pay for food, like blah, 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 all said and done. Yeah, on set for like 10, I've had time 12, even one shoot was like 14 hours. And what I, I get a $500 paycheck, you know, after you pay for your test, that's 200 bucks right there, now 300 bucks. You know, you got to order yourself DoorDash, something to eat, you know, that's another like 20, 25 bucks at least. You know, what am I taking home at the end of the day? Gas, tolls, getting there. Like $250 for a shoot? You know, like, like, yeah, cool, I got to fuck a hot girl, but you know what? She's the one taking home a $1,200 paycheck. You know, gay porn, I get my test paid for, pay for my flight, they'll pay for my hotel. Like, I treat her like the king I deserve to be. <laughs> so it was a no-brainer. Right. So one thing, though, that I, I really wanted to, like, I guess, highlight in this video, like one reason I was really excited to interview you is, and I mean this, so don't take offense to this, but, like, if you look at, like, your Twitter page, like, you've got a pretty hardcore resting bitch face. Like, you just look very scary and very intimidating and just, you know, like. Can't judge a book by yeah. the cover. Exactly. Yes. And that's the total vibe I get from you. And then you go and you look at your Instagram and like you're fucking smiling and it's like completely different person. And like the more I looked into you, I was like, I got a feeling that you're like retardedly smart and just everything that someone would assume about you based on your appearance. I'm guessing you're probably the total opposite. Yeah, I get that all the time. Even when I first meet people, like, they'll literally, like, stop me mid-conversation and just be like, wow, like, not what I was expecting at all. And, um, you know, I don't know. I've just always loved the alt look. I've always loved tattoos. Even, like, I can remember I was, like, 13, 14, pissing my dad off, telling him, like, I wanted to get this tattoo and that tattoo. And he's all, like, you know, old-school Italian Trump. So he's just like, no, <laughs> no, 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 Like, I couldn't get my first tattoo until I was 18. Um, I got my tongue pierced when I was 17, got grounded for a month. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. I've always loved the look. The look is, like, the main thing. But as I've gotten older, um, you know, I was actually always the fat kid growing up. I was uh, 260 pounds at my biggest, pre-diabetic, almost had diabetes. And... Um, uh, I feel like transforming myself to the way I am and giving myself the appearance I do. Um, it just like, I'm really big on respect. Like, I don't know, like nothing will set me off more than being disrespected. Like I, uh, I'm Italian. I'm from Jersey. Uh, I don't know. I'm just really big on the whole respect thing. So um, growing up kind of the fat kid, you know, I got made fun of a lot. I got in a lot of fights when I was younger. Um, you know, I got bullied um so i was always the butt end of people's jokes i was always just kind of the like and and they try to like make it like you know they are, and they're just like oh like haha and i'm just like ha, yeah you know but like you know people don't do that now like people watch what comes out of their fucking mouth when they talk to me and people who have known me since i was younger you know they, they'll say like look at the way you are now compared to the way you were and they're just like oh like what's your favorite part about your transformation? It's got to be like all the hot chicks you get to bang, blah, 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 blah. You know, like my guy's friends, like back in high school and shit. I'm like, no, honestly, it's the fucking respect for me. It's the way that people fucking talk to me. Actually, I, I'm like beyond impressed with the way you articulated that. Like I, you took the words out of my mouth. I've been wanting to say that exact same thing for so long. And it's like, I remember with my son, one day we were doing something and I was just telling him, I'm like, I cannot stress to you how powerful, like, being muscular and looking scary privilege is. 
because <laughs> people treat it's night and day difference. Like you get away with shit you otherwise couldn't. Like it's yeah, no. no my, my my girlfriend's stretching over here. She's laughing right now because she says all the time because I just do what the fuck I want, and I'm realistically <laughs> she's like you can't do that, and I'm like the fuck are they gonna do? Like let's be real here. I like like literally like. I'm not going to lie. I kind of live my life by no rules, no laws. I kind of just do what I want to do. And luckily, you know, I'm not going to wood, but I've made it this far. I don't even have a point on my license, let alone getting arrested. But um, I don't know. I just kind of do what I want to do. And I just look at it and I'm just like, what the fuck are they going to do? Like, realistically, like, are they really going to come say some shit to me right now? No, they're not. <laughs> I, I'm laughing hysterically because I've had that exact same conversation more times than I can count. It's like, what the fuck are they going to say? They're not going to say. Literally, so. literally, they can think all they want, like, but when push comes to shove, the fuck are you going to do? Not shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I could give two fucks what you think. So, yeah. so what? Like, I'm I'm assuming bodybuilding was like the beginning of this transformation, right? Well, yeah, when I went to the doctor, I got some blood work done when I was younger, and uh, they told me I was pre-diabetic and insulin resistant, and that was kind of like the big like thing that hit home with me, because my grandmother died before she was 70, I think she was 67 from diabetes, um, so I know it's in my bloodline, and I know how serious of a disease it is, and that really just kind of like kick-started, I'm like, fuck, you know, because I played hockey my whole life till I was um, 21, and uh even being like the bigger kid, like I was really like, I probably, if I decided to lose the weight younger, I probably could have went pretty far with hockey. Um, but it really just started wanting to be healthy and not get diabetes, you know? And um, I just started watching guys like Jay Cutler and Kai Green on YouTube, just like their day, like a day in the life kind of thing and what they did and like how they meal prepped and the way they trained. And, um, it kind of just turned into a lifestyle slash obsession, I guess. Yeah, because it just, you know, you start losing weight, feels good, and you see, like, changes in the mirror. You get to start going shopping, buying different clothes, people giving you compliments. You start getting some hotter girls. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was just like every, everything. I was just like, you know, I kind of I kind of fuck with this. Um the dieting was sucks. Still sucks. I love food. Still affected at heart. You know, um, I'm not gonna say I love the diet, but I love what comes out of it, and I love knowing that I'm able to do what like 99% of this population can't do. You know, and that's just having that self discipline. You know, I wake up every day. You know, you can ask my girlfriend. I'm starving when I wake up. I get my ass to the gym. I do 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how I ate the day before, of fasted cardio. I stretch. I get my cardio in. I come home, and then I make myself breakfast, do what I need to do for the day kind of deal. And then I go back later, and I lift. I'm in the gym twice a day, probably close to four hours a day. When I'm on a normal routine, the past couple months, I've not been on a normal routine with all the traveling and moving that I've done. So luckily, this past like week and a half, I able to get myself back in my routine and it just makes me feel like so much better like my my mental health is so much better when i'm actually on my routine and in the gym and i guess just from being a fat kid my whole life like my mental health is directly correlated with my physical health so you know even now i'm like kind of like puffy i'm not like completely like shredded full six pack like i normally have and it gets to me you know and i even have a lot of fans who are like oh you don't need to be like that shredded, you know, like I kind of like when there's a little something there, you know, and yeah. I get that, but it just fucks with me more mentally when I can like, when my seatbelt is digging into my freaking, yeah, and I have to like pull my seatbelt out because it's uncomfortable. I don't like that, you know, it fucks with me mentally. I'm like, I don't, you know, it's like the old Arnold saying, if it jiggles, it's fat. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want no jiggling other than in my butt. No, just like literally listening to your story, I relate to so much of what you're saying. Because, I mean, I wasn't the fat kid growing up, but I was like the super, super skinny kid. Oh, okay. If you, I, had the, you, I had the opposite. you had the opposite problem. Yeah. I 
ate when I wanted to and didn't work out, I'd weigh like 140 pounds. Yeah. So yeah, no, I get like the, you know, how your physique makes you feel all that stuff. Um, I'm assuming now you go to dragons later, right? I haven't yet. I have not gone there yet. I need to get over there. Um, I haven't, like, I've seen videos all over social media of it, but I've just been so busy with, like, if you see my house, it's still, like, not even half unpacked just because I have to do so much in my day-to-day, and it's also I'm in the gym for, like, four hours a day. So, like, between shooting porn, trying to, like, I'm starting my own business this year, too, which is um, that I should be launching that within the next, like, four weeks. I'm dealing with the manufacturing process right now. They're kind of schlacking um but what are you I, doing i'm starting my own supplement business uh, a little bit different kind of supplements not so much uh, geared towards like working out like the typical protein like stuff like that so it's a very saturated market as far as that goes um so like peptides and stuff or something different? it's actually a hangover cure drink i'm making it into uh excuse me it cures uh you know certain substances kind of hang over not just you're like there's already like liquid ivs and stuff like that with electrolytes yeah. and all that for your normal alcohol hangover but um i'm really big in the rave edm community uh, i went to my first rave in my senior year of high school i was 17 years old i went to ultra down in miami i literally asked for it for christmas for my parents a ticket and uh you know i've been going since then and obviously <clears throat> that community has grown substantially since then. I feel like ever since like social media and COVID it has absolutely taken off. Like there's like, there'll be one weekend, there'll be two or three different festivals going on throughout the country the same weekend. You know, there's different shows every week and it, it's just blown up substantially. Um, but, you know, I was one of these young kids, you know, 18 to 21, 22 years old. It's just starting to go to raves and let's just, pop this and have some fun yeah and they don't know what they're taking they don't know what they should be taking beforehand what they should be taking afterwards like you shouldn't just be popping shit and hoping you have a good time because half the time you're going to wind up throwing up or passing out you know so it's like you know, there's certain vitamins your body needs in order to withstand these substances without you <laughs> crashing and feeling like complete shit the next day you know, waking up with a sore jaw because you're constantly all heart and night and, er, and everything. And you feel depressed because your serotonin levels are completely depleted and everything like that. They're like, why am I so sad and arguing with everybody today for no reason? You know, it's because you literally just took something that pumped out all your serotonin the night before. I've literally experienced every single thing you've <laughs> Most people have, you know, well, people who like to party, you know. Um, so my drink has nine different vitamins in it that your body needs in order for you to not feel like complete shit the next day. Um, so right now um, I'm making it into a, it's like a scoop powder. It's kind of like a C4 kind of deal. It's going to come in like an eight ounce container. Uh, you take one scoop, you put it in four to six ounces of water. So it's like a shot. You don't have to drink like in a whole, whole thing. And um, you do one before you go out, kind of preload your body. You know, it's got like 5-HTP in it for your serotonin levels. Magnesium, lockjaw, niacin helps your blood flow because you know, you're taking that shit restricts your blood flow. That's why you can't get your dick hard. Um, so it's got nine different vitamins in it. And then you go out, party, have a good time. You come home, take another scoop, slug it down. And you wake up the next day, and you feel fine. Damn. Yeah, you're actually like I've like when I was way younger, like I experienced all that shit. I'm just saying, like I would have paid good money for some shit, you know. Every time I tell somebody about it, they're just like, "Can I buy it now?" And I'm like, "Yeah, if the manufacturer hurries the fuck up, <laughs> yeah." Because I literally just went to a ASD. It's like a giant um, business convention here in Vegas, and. Um, there's boosts everywhere. There's bang energy. There's this energy. There's that energy. Like there's like a hundred different companies putting caffeine and taurine into a bottle or a shot or something and selling that. Um, then they have their basic, you know, hangover for just alcohol cures, you know? Um, but nothing is really geared towards this. And it's just tricky. Cause obviously like I can't say that's what it's for when it comes to marketing, 
you know, so the marketing is where it's, it, it's going to get tricky. Um, so I need to like brand it the way I'm calling it rejuvenate to make sure of like, you know, rejuvenate. I mean, it's like rejuvenated, wake up. My slogan is wake up feeling rejuvenated. Um, I might drop the feeling. I think I might do wake up rejuvenated kind of torn between that. Um, so I'm kind of just keeping it very mainstream and everything like that. But the way that I plan on shooting the commercials and marketing it, you know, people are going to know what's good. Like I'm, I'm kind of emphasizing the five HTP, which I feel like a good amount of people know, like, like it's kind of what five HTP yeah. is kind of used for. And that's one thing I've noticed every time I'm like going into gas stations and like stuff like that, I'm looking at these little hangover cure bottles and I'm looking at them and I'm like, nobody's doing it. Nobody's got five HTP in here. Some have magnesium, a couple of them have niacin, but not a single one has that five HTP in it. Why? I don't know why, but I'm a cashier on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm actually like blown away because the fact that no one's done this yet is truly just mind boggling. No, yeah, there's a massive market. I mean, this market's worth, and it's not just the million. physical community, like because that's kind of like where I'm starting. Uh, the most cost effective way was to get it into this like bottle with scoop form. Um, so you're going to get 10 servings out of that. So that's where people who are like actively going to like three day festivals kind of deal. And they're like taking this stuff pretty frequently kind of deal. So I'm kind of like, and I have a big influence as far as, um, that community goes. I've been in it so long. I know so many people, other influencers, people who run big EDM pages where I can market to and stuff like that. But I eventually want to get into more of the, uh, single serving, um, going to get it made into like gummies. And also uh, shop bottle kind of things for kind of, I want to go more mainstream, you know, just for the, the college kid going out on the weekend to the club, to the frat house, whatever. They want to pop their ship. They can just go over to go over to the local convenience store, 7-Eleven, pick up one of my rejuvenated shop bottles, slug it down real quick, and then go have a good time. Because that guy's not going to buy a whole 10 serving bottle of it because he's like, I'll yeah. want this maybe once a month kind of deal you know yeah. so um that's kind of the broader picture those cost a lot more to manufacture so um you know i'm a one-man show right now i don't have any investors i don't have any partners i'm doing everything myself so trying to do this whole porn thing i'm doing mainstream porn i'm doing my only fans i don't have people who do my accounts so i fully manage my accounts i edit my shit i'm in the gym for four hours a day i'm starting a business i just did a cross-country fucking move i'm just like <laughs> right now <laughs> No, I get that. Um, for what it's much. worth, like, I would totally promote that, like, just because I won't promote anything unless I'm, like, absolutely, you know, I believe in this. Well, but um, remind me, after uh, the interview, I'll give you uh, one of my marketing professors' information. He could help you with the... It's like a tight. You're walking. You're walking. A you're walking a tightrope here. I know. It's yes, like, he's he's got the perfect personality for this type of product. So I'll I'll, I'll hook you up with him. Yeah. Um. So what inspired like your move to Vegas? Um, I mean, I'm guessing just, just more opportunity as far as my current career and obviously starting that business. Um. You know, I was living down in Florida, which is um. I call that the pond for porn. That's the pond. You know, it's kind of like everybody, it's, it's a good place to start. It's a lot of amateur, you know, stuff like that. Um, it was good for me to help build a name. I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond. You know, if you jump right into LA, Vegas, that's kind of the ocean, you know. So then you're like, you're a small fish fighting in the ocean. You know? Where in Florida? Uh, I bounced between, I was living in Orlando, moved down to Miami for a bit. He did it so fucking much broke my lease early in less than six months and moved my ass right back up to Orlando because I was so unhappy down in Miami. Really affected my mental health. Hated it there that much. What was so bad? Um, the I mean, I can think of tons of reasons, but why for you? The people, the vibe, um, the traffic. Yeah, it's just stupid expensive for nothing. Like what I paid for for a one-bedroom apartment, I got a three-bedroom house up in Orlando, you know, I had a backyard, fire pit, there's like a little pond, you hear the crickets, you know, Miami, they were doing construction right behind my building, I'd get woken up at 8 a.m. on the dot every fucking day by construction, and not only that, there was like a shoe business 
there's like a strip of businesses. It was like a shoe business because I finally went over there one day raging. But they were running like a kennel in the back. Like literally, I could look out my window and see there was like a, like a cover and then a bunch of dogs they let out. And these dogs were like big ass, like pit bull and like, like, and barking and barking and barking. And they just leave them out there all fucking day. I called the cops like three times and I'm like, I went over there. I'm like, this is a sh- like a shoe fix. They're fixing shoes, but they're running a, a kennel in the back. Like, is that legal? Are you allowed to do that? And they're like, oh, he's saying they're his dogs. He just brings them to work. I'm like, this motherfucker has eight dogs. He's right. He's got, yeah, really? I'm like, fuck you. And they're like, I had mail get stolen constantly. Forget it. Like, what, Amazon stopped resending me stuff. Literally, because I, I hit them up and I'm like, I never received this. And they're like, oh, well, here's the picture of it left at your door. Or they had the lockers, like the luxury lockers. Yeah. And they didn't have enough lockers for all the residents. So the Amazon drivers would literally leave whatever leftover packages didn't go in a locker and would just leave them in like a bin, a mail bin. And I'd go down there and there would literally be talk boxes, just like torn open, empty boxes, like people just going in there and taking people's shit. And I'm like, I fucking hate Miami. I hate the people down here. I'm out. Oh. Like, I'm out. <laughs> like, no. Like, okay, this, this is a pretty bad experience, dude. Yeah. Fuck. I'll never, never, never again. No, not for me. I'm more of like, my end goal is I want like a house in Colorado, up in the mountains. I just want to like walk out my back deck in a robe, slippers, cup of coffee, blunt. <laughs> and just look over the mountains and not hear a fucking thing. Just silence. <laughs> nice. No, I get that. So, like, you said you started off as an influencer on Instagram. Like, what was your, and you said you had, like, friends who were doing, like, gay for pay, et cetera. How did you start? I, uh, I used to be a plumber, well, plumbing apprentice, actually. Uh, Went to college for three semesters, realized how much of a waste of time and money it was. Literally, I was just putting myself in a debt to party and honestly not wearing a fucking thing. Um, I wanted to be like a sports trainer kind of deal. I wanted to work for like major like universities, colleges, like training athletes kind of thing. Um, realized it really is not shit for money in that. Um, so... My dad, he owns an auto mechanic shop. He's a blue collar worker, you know, kind of thing. And he's just like, all right, well, if you're going to drop out of college, you should go and do a trade. And I'm just like, all right, well, what trade makes the most money? I looked it up. Apparently plumbers do. So I'm like, fuck it. Like, I'll try plumbing. I got a plum- plumbing apprenticeship. I did that for almost two years. Hated my fucking life. Was literally depressed. I used to wake up some mornings and be physically sick. I, like, will physically throw up. And I'm like, why am I like, why am I sick? Why am I throwing up? Like, Jesus. I, I used to just let my alarm clock would go off at 6 a.m. And I would sit, I would lay there and stare at my ceiling fan and be like, I cannot do this my whole life. Like, how do people do this their whole fucking life for like 20, 30 fucking years? I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm not even two years into it. And I want to fucking, you know, so finally I walked in one day. Um, it was the weekend after Labor Day, actually. So we had an extra day off. And I walk in, and I'm, like, maybe realistically, like, six or seven minutes late. And my manager is, like, standing out front of the, out front of the big bay door smoking a cigarette. I'm just like, hey, man, how's your weekend? You doing anything fun for Labor Day? He goes, you're fucking late. I'm like, yeah, nice to fucking see you, too. And he's like, excuse me? And I'm like, I, I just snapped. I'm like, why are you such a fucking dickhead? Honestly, why are you such a fucking dickhead? And he's like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, I'm talking to you, motherfucker. Like, I literally just said good morning to you, and that's how you fucking... And I went there from the end, I just quit. I'm like, fuck you. I fucking quit. And, like, and I walked out. And I wound up going on other interviews. I got two more jobs. I was like, oh, like, I don't know what else to really do right now. I need to pay my rent. So I went on other interviews. I got offered two other jobs as a plumbing apprentice by two companies. And my girlfriend at the time, we were sitting there, and I'm just like, I don't fucking want to do this shit. I really don't want to do it. Um, I was a male stripper at the time. She was a female stripper. And um, I was working for the Exotica conventions, um, 
you know, have you ever heard of those exotica um so like i was performing on stage for them stripping and i had met some people in the industry from doing that and you know they were like oh you got a good look like you should really consider like doing adult work and i'm like no nah, i got my career you know i'll lose my job i can't really like be doing all that and i'm like i said to her i'm like i might fucking i might just fucking do porn honestly and this was like back in before OnlyFans was even huge, this was like the premium Snapchat days. Like this was like people were had their private story that you had to add each individual user. So I started with premium Snapchat and I had a following on Instagram and I would post like, you know, sexy pictures and underwear and applied nudes and stuff like that. So I'm like, I have the audience for it. So like, let's see how this goes. So I was doing that for a while and then, you know, wound up getting a couple like pro bookings and just kind of snowballed and went from there you know i never really thought i'd be at the point i am now you know kind of kind of thing but it feel, feels good to be here <laughs> so you just jumped in like head first like fuck it yeah i've always kind of just had like i've never given a fuck what people thought kind of thing and that was actually honestly, being a guy going into straight porn there's not so much like a stigma behind it. It's more like, oh yeah, he's like he's fucking all the bitches kind of thing, you know. So <clears throat> that really wasn't like that big of a thing to like get over, you know, kind of thing. Um, the like deciding to do the gay porn thing was definitely uh, something that I put some like thought into for a while. Um, you know, I like straddled that line. I did like a lot of uh, like wrestling, you know, kind of, I was really big and I did a lot of like fetish wrestling videos kind of thing. Um, a lot of muscle worship domination, like that was like my bread and butter for, for a couple of years, just like flexing and talking shit uh, kind of thing. Um, but again, really wasn't making that good of money, you know, kind of thing. I never, uh, never broke that six figure mark until this past year when I actually decided to start working with men kind of deal and honestly like men are a lot fucking easier to deal with than women are like they actually show up when they're supposed to show up like i'd say like for every 10 things i'd schedule with women maybe like six to seven of them would cancel <laughs> you know so then like it's just yeah overall just a lot i want to say like easier but relieving experience <laughs> i guess yeah lower stress lower bullshit yeah damn and, okay. and it's nice actually sending a video out and seeing people purchase it because <laughs> before like people would like subscribe to my page and then they'd really only like buy a lot of my like solo and muscle worship like content and stuff like that and then i'd like go and spend two hundred dollars on a test so i could like film the scene with this girl who i just wanted to fuck and then i'd make like a hundred bucks back on it <laughs> you know Jeez. but i actually sell like a decent amount of my boy girl content now i guess just from like over the years um like surprisingly i didn't film any for like a year when i had gotten to my most recent relationship um we kind of you know weren't so comfortable with each other working um with like she wasn't working with other guys i wasn't working with other girls um but as a relationship grew and we gained more trust in each other kind of deal and you know after you do it for so long you know i'd say it's not um you know i guess you just become kind of desensitized to it kind of thing so like she's working with other guys now and i work with other girls now and um, we just trust each other. You know, we have certain thing like boundaries as far as that goes. You know, like I won't kiss, like we don't kiss people unless it's like a pro set and they're like, this isn't the script, you need to do this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but no, yeah, surprise. Like I, when I went back to working with women, I was kind of like, oh, we'll see if this sells or not. Obviously my gay content sells like twice the amount, but um yeah, I literally just had a couple people this past week who recently subscribed to my OnlyFans because I have it on sale, and they're just like, oh, can you send me this video with this girl? And I'm just like, yeah, I can. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'd be willing to bet dollars to donuts that it's the game man buying the straight content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a few I have a few female fans, 
I actually, I, I have this one woman who's been on my OnlyFans for probably like two, at least two years now. And uh, she actually bought me a fuck machine. <laughs> she she bought me a, it's like a little, like this big, and it's pink. <laughs> she bought me a pink little, like, fuck machine. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's one thing that's always blown my mind, because, like, 90% of the content that I shoot is gay. And how many female subscribers I have, like, still to this day blows my mind. I'm like... I don't get it. No, I I don't get it either. But you know what? If you're happy watching it, I'm happy providing it. Exactly. I've been getting a lot of requests for buy content, like a lot. Like I even put up like a post last week on my OnlyFans, like New Year, like what do you guys want to see, blah, 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 blah. And the majority was was buy content. Like they were like, I want like male, male, female, buy, male, male, female, male, male, female, buy. And I'm just like... And I actually just filmed my first one uh, this past week, so hopefully. Have you shot any cuckold scenes? I did one. I did one uh, cuckold scene. They weren't like a real cu- couple. It was kind of like oh, this okay. girl who, uh, she's a dominatrix kind of thing, and um, she wanted to film. And I was like, my one-on-one girl content. If it's just literally just straight up like we're just having sex, like there's no anything to it, really yeah. isn't going to sell very well. So I was like, why don't you grab one of your subs, I'll throw them in the corner, pretend like he's your like sugar daddy, whatever kind of deal. And so I did one of those like a couple months ago. It's sold decently, actually. But uh, I've had a few cuck couples who have like contacted me. They just usually like don't live in major cities. They live in like bumblefuck yeah. random nowheres. So it's kind of like hard for me to like get in with them because, you know, most performers will move to like, you know, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Vegas, L.A. So it's easy to like work like within that network. But, you know, there's like there's this one couple in like New Mexico. (laughs) And and I'm just like, I've never been to New Mexico other than to drive through it to get to Vegas. So I'm just like, why don't I? And then I'm not going to fly all the way to New Mexico to film a cock video. So, (laughs) well, for what it's worth. Cuckold videos, uh, small penis humiliation, and surprisingly, fart worship all sell retardedly well. <laughs> I used to have my one. I used to have and one. Our looks are pretty similar, so that's I had what I mentioned. I had one guy who, uh, before Snapchat banned me, and I can't even make a new Snapchat unless I buy a new phone now. They, like oh, IP, the IP address blocked me. But Damn. every time he's like, every time you fart. I want you to send me like a video of you farting. And he's like, make sure you get your face in it. Cause I want to see your like face. And he'd cash at me five bucks for every fart. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. No, the, the far worship one I did, the very first one was like, it was a custom video request. And the guy asked me and I was like, dude, I, I don't know anything about this. Like, you're going to have to script this. Like, explain to me like I'm a golden retriever. Yeah. So he basically like scripted the whole thing, you know, made it. And then I put it up for individual purchase. To this day, it's still my best selling video. Really? Next, yeah, dude, that's a. I I had, I had a guy who I saw him like probably like five times back when I lived in Jersey. He lived in like Philly. And. He literally just, like, he had this, it looked like a giant douche or, like, kind of, like, one of the, like, a like a beaker that you use to, like, yeah. kind of, I don't even know. Yeah. But he was like, I want you to take this, I want you to put it in your butt, and I just want you to squeeze air into it and then just fart on my face. And that's it. I'd literally, I'd literally be there for, like, 20 minutes. I'd have to drive, like, an hour and a half down to Philadelphia, but I'd be there for, like, 20 minutes and all he would want me to do is squeeze this into my butt and fart in his face while I jerked off. Happy as a clam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Dude. Dude. Every time I think I've heard it all, I hear something new where I'm just like, I would. You know, I know my favorite. My favorite like client I ever had. Drove down to Baltimore. And this guy just wanted to, he had a feeding fetish. So all I had to do was lay in bed as he fed me pizza and sushi and like cookies and cupcakes. Um, and my stomach was so fucking full and extended. 
And then he didn't even want to jerk off or like do anything. He literally just lay next to me like this and just rub my belly. Just rub my full belly. And that was it. I literally got paid to sit there for like an hour while he fed me. Oh, yeah. On the mukbang videos, those sell well. <laughs> I wish I could get more of those. That was like a one-time thing a couple years ago. I'm like, oh, please. Let me get more of that. Dude, get your girlfriend. <laughs> I'm, there's a market for those solo videos. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've done several of those. You just go buy, like, KFC and McDonald's and, like, some Winchell's Donuts and, yeah, just eat it all in your underwear and then just, like, yeah, look at my belly. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I mean, you personally <laughs> act like shit afterwards, but other than that, it's great. Next cheat day, I'm about to try that out. Um, so I did like one question. I absolutely like. What made you finally cross the line to tattoo your face? Because that's like going past the point of no return. Like, what you're just like, fuck it. I mean, obviously your personality is kind of fucking jump all in, but yeah. You know, um. I wasn't really expecting to do, like, anything studio-wise again, you know, because especially, like, working with guys, like, I just did it for my OnlyFans. Um, I'm like, no straight studios that were going to book me ever again. So I'm like, fuck it. And it's something that I wanted to do. Um, it's definitely, I feel like, impeded, uh, I guess, my opportunities goes. And, like, now, like, that I am working with studios as far as even gay. I really didn't think it mattered in gay porn kind of thing. Um, but apparently it does. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. According to my, according to my Asian my it's just a little too hardcore um for even gay studios so i've gotten like a decent amount of work but nothing from like you know i thought when i like kind of pulled the trigger on deciding to do like gay studios i'm like you know like with my look and like my body and my following you know i thought i'd have like you know falcon and men knocking on my door but no so I don't know. Um, I was, I've been talking to a couple people about it recently and they're just like, you know, just stick with it. Apparently there's some guy, Bo Sins, um, who has like, like face tattoos and like all that kind of stuff. And he's like huge in the gay world. Um, so, uh, we'll see, you know, it's not like I'm doing all right. Like on my own, even without that, I kind of was just doing it for the extra exposure, but I was kind of hoping to get that big exposure from those big time studios. Mm, but, just my humble opinion I say fuck them like I don't know with, like your face tattoo it to me like I don't know you might be a little young for this reference but it's kind of like Cindy Crawford's mole yeah <laughs> like like makes, it's a good thing it's not a bad unique. thing I, makes it unique and honestly exactly. like I plan on tattooing my head anyway kind of thing so, like, right now, because there's nothing up here, it, like, really sticks out. Like, this is pretty much it. But it's going to look a lot more, like, symmetrical when I have, because, like, kind of the mandalas I have here on my chest like that, I'm going to have kind of, like, wrap around my ear like that kind of thing on both sides. And then I'm going to do some kind of design in the negative space in between. So that's going to really, like, pull it, like, all together and it'll look, like, more symmetrical. And it's honestly just the look that I've wanted for years. Like, I kind of have all my tattoos planned out. Um, I need to finish this first. I just got a fade package this past year done on this. I got this removed. I got this when I was, like, 17. My friend did it out of his bedroom. So I'm going to tattoo over this and finish this sleeve first. And then I plan on doing all that. Um, but by that point, I probably won't be doing any studio work at all. Um you know, I'm going to see what I, I might still do some, I mean, I've been loving getting into like the Dom work ever since I started filming with kink, you know, I never really did much like BDSM type stuff until I moved out here and kink started like booking me to be Dom. So I actually like enjoy that. But, um, you know, if things kind of like take off with my business the way I'm expecting them to, I don't really know how much time I'm really going to even have to do porn at that yeah. point. So I might, like, I'll, I'll probably always, like, keep my OnlyFans just to, like, have it there. It's just, like, extra money. Why the fuck not? Um, and yeah. I might film, like, occasional, like, like Dom-type stuff like that. But, um, you know, I kind of gave myself 
a 10 year max in this industry. I got in at 25. I'm like, I'm getting out at 35. Like, I don't care. You know, I'm going to make my money. And then I'm like, I want to retire by the time I'm 40. Like I literally just like, I want to have enough passive income to just like travel the world and do whatever the fuck I want. So I'm hoping I could like build this business. I have another business like that I want to start after this one. I have like two business ideas that I want to start and I want to invest in real estate and I just want to travel the world. I want to see the world. Yeah. Like a couple of things. First on what you just said, I don't know. Maybe this will be the equivalent of what moment it was for me. But like, I remember pretty early on when I first, like when I first got in this industry, I was doing like, like I released a new partner video every Sunday and I'm sure you've been in that position where it's like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you're like, fuck, I got to have something to release this weekend. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I hate this feeling. Like, and I read an article with Jenna Jameson, and it said when she retired, she had eight years of, like, content, like, updates, you know, just backlog. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Yeah. And I was like, and that was just kind of like a light bulb moment for me. So I really started like shooting a lot more and it's like right now where I'm at, I've got two, two and a half years worth of updates. Holy so shit. I could, I could quit filming right now and I'd still have new content to release for the next two and a half years. Well, that's fucking crazy. Damn. So I'm just saying, dude, if you like get that mindset right now, you could have fucking five years or more worth of content built up. Yeah, see, I kind of do something, like, just not to that scale, you know, like, I'll kind of, when I was out in LA and Vegas for uh, AVN and Expos, I shot a shit ton, and that got me through, like, about two months, two and a half months, I'd say, I really didn't have to worry about filming much, and now, like, um, that's kind of dwindling down, I only have, like, maybe three or four more left in the left in the vault right now so now i literally just got myself tested yesterday got results back from tts today and uh i have a couple shoots lined up for this week and hopefully get a few more for next week while i'm still within my 14 day period and you know hopefully that'll last me you know a couple more months kind of thing it's just like so much going on right now with especially trying to like start my business uh, just to be like shooting every single day and also finding what like works for me and my brand also like you know i'm not just selling vanilla sex like it's really easy to just hit somebody up and be like hey what's up yeah you know, so it's like i'm like trying to coordinate more like buy threesomes you know so now i'm trying to not only get a guy to show up but get a girl to show up yeah yeah <laughs> no that makes sense and that's and the biggest thing is like people not a whole lot of people take this like one thing is I'm very business oriented and I take my shit seriously. So it's like, if I like schedule that I'm going to shoot with somebody, I'm going to shoot. I'm like, I'm going to show up. And like so many people like are just kind of have like a fuck it, whatever attitude. So maybe if people, like a lot more people took it seriously and treated it like a job, maybe they, you know, see themselves be more successful. Yep. That is literally my single biggest complaint about this industry. Yeah. Like if I book to shoot with you, you know, two days from now, the only way I'm not showing up is I got to be like dead or in the fucking hospital. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. I, I'm <clears throat> um, I did want to mention though, the fucking line work on your neck is retardedly impressive. It's incredible, right? Yeah. Like you had a couple pictures and I was like sitting there zooming in. I was like, Holy fuck. Yeah. Like, that's some impressive shit. He's the guy who um, I'm going to have him finish this because he didn't do this bottom part. A guy out here in Vegas did, which like I like it. It's good, but he's way too slow. Um, like and I'm paying like eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars for a day of tattooing. And you're not even getting like 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 this elbow piece here. Like, he didn't finish the whole, like, inside in here. And I paid him $1,800 for a day of tattooing. And it's like, this is all the work that I got done out of it. I'm just like, you know. Yeah. So this guy, he's out in New Jersey, actually, kind of close to where I grew up. The only thing is I need to book, like, six months in advance for him. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, so, like, I was supposed to have an appointment with him in April. Um, but I booked that months and months ago but now uh, my favorite festival of the year i didn't even realize i'd have to fly out the day after 
the uh, the appointment. Um, so and that's in like Cancun, Mexico. So I'm like, I can't be in the sun and in the water with a gay, fresh, old tattoo. Yeah. So I'm like, shit. All right, I have to cancel this and reschedule. And they're like, all right, well, next availability is for like September. And so I'm just like, fuck. All right, but you know, I'd rather wait for him because you know, when it comes to tattoos, I look at it like plastic surgeons. Like you're permanently altering your body. I never understood how people could just walk into a shop and be like, oh, this is what I want to get done. And I'd be like, all right, uh, he's free. You know, come do that. And I'm just like, you know, and like, I don't, I, I'll never go to a guy who I'll be, like, I'll be like, oh, like, what do you do this kind of work? Like sacred geometry. Like that's what this is, sacred geometry work. And I'm like, oh, like, you know, can you like, do you specialize in sacred geometry work? And they'll be like, oh, you know, like I can pretty much do anything. I'm like, okay, no. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I don't want somebody who can do an average job at everything. I want somebody who does this day in and day out. So it's like this guy, like that's all he does is all sacred geometry. This guy I went to in Tampa, you know, all he does is black and gray, like photorealism work. Um, the guy who I'm doing my like late one on here, all like all he does is like gory, like like kind of like he's a Maryland kind of thing. So I find these guys on Instagram and I go to them. Nice. Yeah. And the guy who did your neck, I'm assuming you're going to have him do your head. Yes, he's definitely he's doing my head, too. I just got to yeah. talk to him about his rates, though, because, like, when I was emailing his assistant, um, he used to be 500 an hour. And then I saw at the bottom of the email that he's 750 an hour. So I'm going to have to have a talk about that because that's a little excessive. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, you need to grandfather that shit. Like, I've been around. No, uh, yeah. So, and like, we're pretty cool too. Yeah, but me and him. So, I'm gonna see if uh, he could just. Who the fuck is that? Um, sorry, I just got a knock on the same door. Yeah. No. So uh, that's one thing I too. I do not. I do not have people know where I live, either. Or even yeah. when I like film with other stars you know i'll either go to their place or get like a room or airbnb or something like that yeah no i understand that who was that who was it what do you mean you don't know oh okay no i i think i i like the tattoo on your face like i think it makes you unique you know because i'd be willing to bet if i was like a little more cut up right now and at a distance you and I look pretty damn similar. Yeah. What sets you apart is this. Yeah. Like, it's okay, really, that one's Gunner. It's really the meaning uh, behind it. Um, you know, like, I can't. I came up with this myself. People ask me all the time, like, what is that? Like, what, like, what does it Looks Nordic. What does it stand for? Um, it actually, do you know who Lilith from the Bible is? Do you know, like, Lilith, um, she's like a demigod. It's also another kind of thing. I do like the demigod thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, she refused to lay with Adam, so she was like banished away. Um, so Lilith, um, she her symbol stands for um, it's like the epitome, epitome of feminism and refusing to conform to society. And her symbol is the inverted cross with the crescent moon sitting off to the side of it, like that. So I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm kind of like the male Lilith. I've always refor- refused to conform to society, you know. Like, my whole life, my dad was just telling me, he's like, you can't do that. Like, this is the way society does things. I'm just like, why? Fuck that. That's so stupid. You know, and so I took the crescent moon and I turned it like that and I kind of made it into horns. And it really just stands for, like, for me, the crescent moon is a symbol of, like, for being, like, empathetic, like an empath, like caring, you know. So, like, I'm an empath. I'm a very loving, caring, giving person, you know. But my whole fucking life, I've had that taken advantage of, you know, like I'll give and give and give and people will take a fucking mile. And then I have to put my foot down and stand up for myself and be like, all right, no, this is ridiculous. And then I look like an asshole, even though look at everything else I've fucking done for you. So that is stands for that. But then the inverted cross stands for don't fuck with me. Don't take my kindness for weakness because I'm not the fucking one, you know, and then the two dots stands for like having a perfect balance of both nice that actually my next question was how like you're a you're definitely a very unique character because there's like half of you that's like fuck the rules fuck the system like i'm not doing shit like 
very rebellious, right? Yeah. But then you've got the other half of you that's like very responsible and punctual and, you know, goal oriented and entrepreneurial. Like, how do those coexist? You yeah. know, because a lot of those things don't typically go together. You should have seen me at this business convention the other day with the button down shirt talking business with these big CEOs with my fucking face tattoo. It's kind of funny, but that's, I am who I am. That's me, motherfucker. You know, I really just want to, I can't wait for the day I get put in my bio from porn star to CEO, bitch. Like, I can't wait. (laughs) Fucking cool. Yeah. That is cool. Um, God, what was I going to say? Oh, no. Okay, so if someone's interested in finding your content, because I, I think, I don't know, like your content is, I wouldn't describe it as like sensual and passionate, and it's not like super hardcore detached. It's kind of like in the middle. Yeah. I if, try. That, if that makes sense. I try to do like a little, cause that's how I am more in like my personal life too. You know, like I'm not like, just like slow, like making out, like making love the whole time, but I'm also not choking you, spitting in your face and pounding you out the whole time. You know, like, it's like a little bit of both, you know, you gotta switch it up. You don't want just the same thing like over and over again. That was kind of like me, like when I was younger in college, I actually had like one girl who was a, this like stripper I used to hook up with. And she'd be like, you know, you don't have to be like Mr. Jackrabbit the whole fucking time. <laughs> you know, so that's when I kind of like, you know, you, you got to switch it up. You know, kind of start slow, warm it up. You can't just right from the start. So uh, I've, I've been dipping more into the, like, like I said, the BDSM style stuff. So um, with my more like upcoming content, it'll probably be a little more hardcore kind of thing. But you got to watch with like my, my, Biggest following is OnlyFans. I maybe have like uh, 50 fans on my Just for Fans. I really don't even know how to use that platform very well. It's not very. I say OnlyFans is like the iPhone, and Just for Fans is like a Droid. Like the Droid is better altogether. It's a better platform. They'll treat you better. You could do more with it if you can figure it out. <laughs> iPhone kind of fucking sucks. Has the biggest market share and is a lot more user friendly. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because that is literally the single best fucking analogy I have ever heard regarding those two platforms. Like you articulated it perfectly. Yeah. Like Just for Fans is great. You know, they're fucking awesome. Like they're not gonna delete my content for literally no reason. And then when I ask why, just be like, You violated our terms. I'm like, Yeah, no shit. What did I like what is it? I just posted a dildo video last week, like um and it literally has nothing wrong. I'm literally just riding and fucking myself with a dildo, not sniffing poppers or like anything. I literally skimmed through the whole thing, especially while editing to make sure I cut that all out and everything like that. And I emailed them and I'm like, they deleted it three times. I uploaded it. I'm like, what is wrong with this video? And they're just like, Oh, it breaks our terms of service. I'm like, yep. They'll never tell you why, but what is wrong with it? So all I did was like cut the video in half and post it in two parts and then it was fine. <laughs> Like, okay. I've literally posted like pictures to my OnlyFans that were safe for Instagram and OnlyFans deleted them. And I'm yeah, just like, uh, what? Yeah. I, yeah no. uh, I just like thought of one thing I wanted to touch on before when we were talking about the whole like um, working between like being a crossover and stuff like that. I will once say one thing that I would like to see better with the gay community um, is taking testing more seriously. Um, that's one thing I have noticed and probably why that's like a good reason. I'm sure like a lot of women don't want to work with crossover males is because of the lack of responsibility with the gay community when it comes to testing. I will say I'm kind of disappointed, um, when it comes to that, like in the straight world, like they're very, like, you need to be tested. Like, you know, like, but you need, like, I'm not going to like girls are strict with that shit, you know? When it comes to guys, you guys are a little more just kind of like, fuck it. You know, I've gotten quite a few of the, like, I'll schedule a test with a guy, blah, 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 blah. And then the day comes where we're supposed to shoot. And I'll be like, oh, hey, like, here's my test. Can you send me yours? And they'll be like, oh, 
I'm neg on prep. I'm like, yeah. Okay, well, you need to have a test. There are a lot of other STDs other than HIV that I'm worried about. So I guess we can reschedule or just like, you know, like it's you know, like when I went out to London for the first time, I set up like a fuck ton of, of trades because I wanted to make sure I got my money's worth and I shot a lot of content out there. And I literally had to cancel like half of them because those dudes out there were just like, oh, yeah, like we just kind of most like kind of like we just kind of like do our thing and don't even worry about testing and i'm like it you have health insurance you get it for free like go fucking get tested like come on like that's that's one thing i would say like maybe if you know crossovers wouldn't have such a hard time if guys were being more responsible with their testing because you know i take that shit very seriously i've been in this industry four years this is going to be my fifth year now and i can honestly say this is a Leviathan cross, but hand to God. <laughs> if you believe in that, me personally, I don't. Hand to whatever is out there. Uh, never popped out a test for anything. Never gonorrhea, never chlamydia, never syphilis, never one single thing. Because that is one thing that I take very, very seriously is my health and sexual health. That's actually a really good point. I never thought about it. <clears throat> In that context, I mean, I won't say what studio, but like, I remember there was a, a studio shoot I did. This was like for one of the biggest names and like every single one of us was tested the night before. I still caught gonorrhea. Yeah. Which yeah, means that not, not one of them was using fake piss or one of them couldn't keep their dick in their pants for 12 hours. Yeah. And like, it's like. I did one, I've only ever done one group, like, kind of deal. Like, I've never done, like, gangbangs or group shoots, blowbangs, anything like that. Um, I got hired by a studio to do one that was, like, a kind of a group thing. It was, like, maybe five or six guys. And they were, the, the producer was shook when I was just, like, I want to see every single one of their tests. And he's just, like, oh, like, I made sure, like, I checked. And then I'm, like, okay, that's great. Now, I'm going to make sure like you are going to pull up their test and you're going to show me. So he walked me over to his computer and he pulled up every single guy's test and I made sure everything was good to go. Yeah. And he was, he was, he seemed like shook by it. He's like, Oh, I guess like other guys just don't like, they're just like, okay, cool. You checked it. Yeah. Like sure. Whatever. Cause like if I'm a producer and I'm getting paid, you know, however much these guys get paid, like, and they're like, oh, like, do I cancel this whole scene and miss my paycheck? Or do I just kind of be like, well, it's not me. I got to worry about it. Like, you know, like, I've heard of that shit happening. You know, like, they'll let shit slide to get their paycheck. But Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that was what happened with the scene where I caught gonorrhea. Because the scene I'm thinking about, it was just four of us. It wasn't like some, you know, 30 guy scene or anything. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I never thought about it like that, but I think, yeah, you're right. As a whole, the gay side is a lot more loosey-goosey. Just, oh, yeah, it's whatever. Just... If, if, if I get HIV, whatever, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not whatever, dude. No, <laughs> like, no. Like, yeah, so um, that's just the one thing that I just came up in my mind when I forgot to bring up when we were doing the whole crossover thing. Yeah. Um. One question I did want to ask, like, when you decided to do gay porn, were you a top only at first, or did you just go in topping and bottoming? I just did top first, <clears throat> and then um, fans kept asking to see me bottom. So then I decided to do it, and uh, that's mainly what they want to see. I'll put, like, I put up a couple polls where I'm just like, oh, do you prefer me as top or bottom, or I'll kind of... Like, I'll post a video that I do a flip scene, and I'll do, like, a little bit of me top, a little bit of me bottom, and I'll be like, oh, do you want to see, like, would you prefer me top or bottom? And it was, like, 75, 80% bottom, and then the rest is, and the rest is top. And, wow. Like, given my look, I'm, like, such, like, a dominating, like. Yes, this, this is like, why I'm asking the question. You'd think you'd be more top, but I don't know. I don't have a huge dick, so I'm, like, maybe I just don't have, like. When it comes to porn, everything is just dramatic. Like they want to see holes being stretched. They want, you know, they, they want like the, the visual. So I don't know. Maybe my dick just doesn't give that 
visual enough of stretching the hole open because it's not need to your glasses. Um, like I compared to a lot of these guys, like you know, I have, I have an average sized dick. I'm not saying I have a small. Dude, I'd say you have a big fucking dick. I, well, I, pre- I appreciate that, but. Not, like, not no matter in, how big it is, someone's is bigger. Maybe to general society, but when it comes to porn, like you know, some of these porn dicks are like, you know, I bought them from this one guy. I haven't released a video yet. Probably in the next couple of weeks. So his name's Ray Diesel, and oh. this dude's dick is literally like the size of this fucking water bottle. Like his shit is like, you know. <clears throat> so that took a while to to work it in there, but I got the job done. <laughs> But, um, yeah, my bottoming content definitely sells a lot more. And at first, it was really hard. Like, shit hurt. You know, like, it was like, you know, but as I've done it more, you know, like, obviously practice, you get better with it. So I'm pretty, um, like, I can do it now, like, really without a problem. But I found that bottoming, to me, is personally easier um, than it is to top. Like, topping... You know, you got to worry about keeping your dick hard while, you know, operating like a point of view camera and you're like going like this, you got to make sure you're out, you know, you're like fucking in a very uncomfortable position while trying to keep your dick hard and worry about a camera, you know, kind of thing. So like with bottoming, I really just got to like get fucked. Yeah, you know, and I'm just like, wow, this is what this is how girls got it. Like all these years I've been top, like I've been like fucking topping these girls and they're just laying there getting fucked and making three times the amount of money as me. Like, cool. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I... You know, like, one of my friends, like, said that to me, too, because he... Uh, well, we're not friends anymore, unfortunately. Um, this one guy, Jake Daniel. Because uh, I saw he, like, primarily did, like, bottoming. And I'm just like, dude, like... Don't, like... And he's just like, it's... Oh, fucking easier man like i just like lay there and let them do their thing and he's like i make more money doing it <laughs> yeah he's like i hate having to use like trimix or some shit when i can't get my dick hard you know kind of deal like sticking a needle in your dick fucking sucks <laughs> damn okay fuck dude you, you gave me a lot to think about so <laughs> for anyone watching who wants to see your content where would they go about finding it uh, best place to find all my content where I keep it most up to date is my VIP OnlyFans. That's uh, OnlyFans.com slash Gunnerstone VIP. Um, but I also like to my other OnlyFans, um, it's a lower subscription price, um, not as engaging and don't post as much on there. And it's a higher, since the paper, since the subscription price is lower, the pay-per-views are a little bit higher to kind of like equal it out kind of deal. Um, so you definitely get the most bang for your buck on my VIP page. That's for sure. Um, but, uh, just, like I said, just for fans, I don't even know what my link for just for fans is. <laughs> um, but yeah. You post all the same content? Uh, just for fans. Yeah. Just for fans. Um, I'll, is no pay-per-view so i just do a weekly release like every friday i just put like a full-length video up on there i really don't post like teasers or pictures or like really anything in between i'll be honest i don't like have enough time to really and i don't even like know how to like send out a pay-per-view on there i remember like my friend was like showing me he's like you gotta go here and then you gotta like post it to the store and then you gotta take it from the store and you gotta do this and then i was like okay that's way too much so i just made that no pay-per-view i put a video up every friday and you know it makes me a little bit of money extra money on the weekend I mean, ever every week yeah I'm, I'm looking at your twitter right now and it doesn't even have your just for fans listed yeah i'll like comment on the like i'll post like a preview on there and then i always comment like i copy and paste pretty much the same thing from my notes right? oh wait, wait, wait i found it it's uh just for fans, just for dot fans, Gunnerstone XXX. Okay, yeah. So that's like the same at as my other, like my not VIP is Gunnerstone XXX. Okay. And then your Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Twitter is at GetStonedXXX, and Instagram is at The Real Gunnerstone. And I'm sure you've noticed there's people impersonating you on Instagram, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
but I just take it as free advertising. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck, it puts me out there more. They're like, who is this guy? I Luckily, I haven't gotten any, like, people messaging me like, oh, my God, this person scammed me, like, did some shit or anything. I've never uh, gotten that. So I'm like, fuck it. If somebody wants to take the time to take my picture and put it out there, all that's doing is giving me more publicity i never really understood why everyone would freak out and be like oh my god fake report 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 and it was just like unless they're like scamming people with your images like fuck it like why not take the extra advertising okay it's a good way of looking at it yeah. and like i'm genuinely curious too but so if anyone's interested in like the the drinks that you're going to be launching the um would you call it revive or replenish? Re re rejuvenate rejuvenate That's so it. if someone's watching this is interested in that how would they you know stay up to date on that um i have it across social media platforms i'm still kind of establishing all that i just got my domain i think somebody's watching me on Instagram because I posted about it on my story a couple of times. So when I went to GoDaddy.com and typed in rejuvenate.com, it was taken and they want like $3,300 for it. So I'm just like, all right, you can fucking eat my ass on that. So the business is legally registered as rejuvenate supplements. So I just made it rejuvenate supplements.com. So I got the domain for that. I still need to create my website. Um, and do that but instagram i got it it's just rejuvenate uh twitter i got that that's rejuvenate and tiktok actually because i plan because my niche market for that i feel like is going to be gen z which is mostly on tiktok so um i have some like skits and clips and stuff i plan on posting on there to help with marketing nice dude i'm i'm seriously blown away by that idea though the fact that no one has done that yet is just like I don't know. There's there's one. I always knew about the five HTP, but I never knew about all the other stuff you mentioned. Well, there's one other company where I based like majority, like I, I, because I know supplements and vitamins are very well just from like doing like the bodybuilding thing and working out. You know, everyone calls me Rave Dad because I always had all my vitamins. And, like we'd be in the hotel room at the end of the night, and I'd be like, "Okay, come here, kids," and we'd be giving them all their vitamins and everything like that. Um, there's one other company out there that does this like formula kind of where it's a hangover cure for this but they have theirs in capsules and the capsules are like this big and your serving size is three of them and the product works it's a great it, it works great uh, like i personally used it for years and that's kind of where i got this idea to like stem off of um but you know, my girlfriend and other people alone are just like, I don't want to take this when I'm like fucked up on drugs, like it's probably dehydrated and like, and now you got to take pills. Like a lot of people don't like taking pills. And I'm like, all right, like what do people like, like when they're fucked up, Who a tasty drink, you know? So starting with three flavors. Um, I got lemon Italian ice, Miami vice and blue raspberry. And they all taste really good. I sampled them all from the manufacturer. They sent samples out before they started full manufacturing of the process. Um, it's stevia sweetened. It's all natural. No dyes. No artificial flavoring. No GMOs. Yeah. So uh, it definitely costed a good amount to manufacture because I'm using such high quality, um, not artificial crap. But I feel like that's really, especially with Gen Z, the route that they want, you know, they really want like all natural, like, like, you know, stuff like that. And I know that's really the target audience. I'd say like 18 to 25 is really um, the biggest thing because they're so just uneducated on like, uh, on it, you know, like I know a lot of like older, at least ravers in the rave community who they like after they're doing it for years, they're like, okay, like I need this for my body. And like, they know what they need kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to target those young, uneducated, like who are, and people are like, oh, like, don't you think this is like promoting drug use? Oh, and, and I'm just like, I just roll my eyes. I'm like, you know, my very first EDC in Vegas, I went to 2018. I was, I got their like premier shuttles and then you get on the shuttle uh, to take you to the festival. They handed everybody a little goodie bag. And in the goodie bag, it had, like, an emergency packet, a lollipop, chapstick, like, everything you need to, like, roll, you know, pretty much. Yeah. And I said to the black lady, I'm just like, don't you think this is, like, promoting people to, like, take drugs? And she goes, oh, sweetie. They're like, we know what y'all doing out there. 
you just want to make sure you're okay while you're doing it. And, you know, and I'm just like, that's the way, like, I like people are going to do this shit whether you like it or not. Yeah. Why not make sure you're, get, like, giving them their what their body needs to not fuck it up and not feel like complete shit the next day? Yeah. You know, you're, you're harming yourself a lot more going out to the bar drinking the fucking alcohol and gasoline they put in the, like, literally, what's in alcohol is only what you put in your gas tank. Like, alcohol is the fucking worst for you, but I'm not even going to, don't even get me started on the government and that shit. Like, yeah, give people their alcohol, have them just drunk and be dumb and do whatever, you know, don't let them do LSD and actually be woke and figure out, like, how the fucking world works. <laughs> I'm guessing, have you watched, uh, uh, fuck, How to Change Your Mind on Netflix? Yes, I have. Yes. Okay, yeah, all right, so we're on the same page then. I am a... Like vast user of you know psychedelics, I know figured out a lot of shit <laughs> with them. You know, the government just likes to demonize that and put them in the same drug category as like heroin and meth uh, to scare people because they don't want people to be woke. They don't want people to be able to think outside the box. Just drink your alcohol, be dumb, go to work. No, no, for sure. I got a feeling you and I could go on in. That's why I said, my don't, my don't even get me fucking started on that subject. Yeah. Gotcha. So, is there anything else you wanted to share? Um, I don't know. We covered a covered a good amount. You know, um, I just like to say, anybody who's watching, who's a fan, and supports me. Um, I love you guys. You know, I've always said I posted about it multiple times. Like. I would be hating my fucking life, I'm probably still a plumber working a nine to five if, if it wasn't like for you guys, you know, like obviously like I contribute like some of my success, like to myself, I work very hard, like, but you know, if it wasn't for them supporting me, there would be no Gunner Stone. I would not be here. I wouldn't be able to live the life that I get to live now. So um, I just want to, you know, once again, thank you guys. I love all of you. Yeah, no, seriously, like, thank you very much for doing this interview. I just, I really, really like when I first started doing this series, I really wanted to interview you just because I had a feeling that you and I were very similar where it's like your physical appearance is this, but I got a feeling there's a hell of a lot more to it. There's a lot of like muscle tattoo guys who you'd be surprised are just like the biggest teddy bears ever. Like, look at like, like Davin Strong, like, look at him, the dude's like, six one like 300 something pound fucking monster of a beast and he's just like the softest little fucking <laughs> yeah so yeah you're like the uh i don't know you probably saw it on instagram where it's like uh the biggest dude in the gym and he's working out and it's like a picture of this rabid pit bull who's like foaming at the mouth and shit and then it's like same dude when you talk to him it's like this golden retriever puppy yeah yeah it's just like see that's that, that's that's this part of me but you know what also don't fuck with me because there is another side that if you do fuck with me i ain't the fucking one <laughs> you know i'm all sweet and nice and giggly until you give me a reason not to be yeah no for sure to all of you, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in and sticking around this long. I hope if you really like Gunnar that you take the time to go subscribe to his content. If you are one of those people who I'm too old for that shit now, but if you're younger and you're still into going out and all that yeah, stuff, uh, never definitely. Old. Never, never <laughs> too old to have a good time. Come on. That's what I say. People say to me, they're like, dude, you've been doing this shit for so long. Does it never get old? I'm like, no, it does not. I'm like, I went to my first team night. Say that now. I went to my first team night when I was 14 years old. I was in my first club. And I still love it. All I'm going to tell you is once I hit 38, the second the sun goes down, I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I'll just have like that day will come. That's all I'm saying. I'll, I'll just have like I'll, I'll just have to sit down instead of like going in mosh pits and raging. I'm still gonna like the music and you know like I, I'll, they make like blow up couches. Like I have a big like blow up couch. I call it a bean. So I'll just sit in my bean and feel all the vibrations of the bass. Happy as a clam. You have like Grandpa Gunner Stone sitting in the back. As I've gotten older, I've just been able to afford a better experience. Before it was just like GA shit, like going to disgusting porta potty with shit and throw up all over it. You know, now I get to get a VIP ticket and have a nice like lit up trailer, air conditioned bathroom. <laughs> I get that. 
Um, no, this this has seriously been a blast. Gunner, don't go anywhere. Um, but thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have an absolutely, absolutely amazing week. I love you all. Thank you for coming, guys.